Assalamu alaikum. Hello everyone. I am Dr. Omar Shakori, accident and emergency surgeon. Today I will explain to you how to deal with the traumatized patient in emergency department. I will put for you the link for this book below the video and it is free book. So let's start. Dear doctors, every day while you are working in the emergency department, you are facing traumatized patients. So what we need to know about this patient and how to deal with the traumatized patient. First of all, and this is very important, is to know how to take proper history from the traumatized patient. From the traumatized patient or for the traumatized patient, we need ample history. We need something called ample medical history. We need to know the A, which is the allergies of that patient. If the patient has any allergy to drugs, to food, and the patient medication, we need to know which medication are which medications are our patient take and also we need to know past medical history and past surgical history of our patient and we need to know the last meal and the LMP of a patient if she was a lady if a patient was a lady and also we want to know about the event of trauma what happened so for example i i will say a 30 years old male presented after road traffic accident after motorcycle accident or after motor vehicle accident presented to your emergency department this patient was conscious and he can talk well how to take the ample history from him? I want you to tell me those five. I want you to know and to tell me, does this patient have any allergy? Does this patient take any medication? What's about his past medical history? Any previous disease? And what about his last meal? This is very important. And I want you to tell me about the event of trauma. Here I mean, I want you to tell me whether this patient was a motor riding person or a, a person was, uh, uh, or he was walking in the street, hit, it by, hit by a car, or he was the driver of the car, or he was the second uh, uh, person in the car, in the second seat, or in the back seat. I want all this information in the event of trauma. And now, after you took the ample history, after you took the ample history, we want to move to the primary survey, which is the A, B, C, D, E, and 4, F. So, regarding the airway, look, let's suppose this is still our patient who is 30 years old, come to emergency department after motor accident and he's, he can talk. The first thing regarding the airway, if the patient can talk, if the patient can talk freely and breathe freely, this means he has intact airway. So the first thing is to look for the airway, is to know if the patient can speak, if the patient can talk, this means the airway intact. If the patient cannot talk, if the patient cannot talk, immediately do those steps. Immediately consider this patient as obstructed airway. So immediately, immediately 
make the chin lift and jaw thrust make the chin lift and jaw thrust I will put a picture here as you see in this picture chin lift and jaw thrust ask for suction ask the nurses the other doctors for suction you may need the suction in that patient also secure the airway by putting airway or uh, uh, oropharyngeal airway which is the rigid airway or nasopharyngeal airway and lastly intubation lastly intubation please note that you have to keep the neck immobilized in natural position so again to make it easy the airway first thing if the patient can talk this mean a normal airway intact airway no need for intervention for airway if the patient cannot talk immediately do as you see in this picture the uh, chin lift jaw thrust and then suction then put airway and lastly if needed put in intubation second step second step is to check the breathing check the breathing of that patient how to check the breathing of that patient by looking to the chest rise look if the chest of the patient rising well bilaterally or unilaterally or paradoxical chest movement if inadequate chest movement and also listen by your stethoscope if inadequate chest rising and inadequate breathing by auscultation first those steps should be considered either you need to give you have to give oxygen you may need ventilation ventilator you may you may have a closed or open uh, 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 you have to close the open chest injury for example i have patient with bullet injury or shell injury through and through in the chest so we have to close the open chest injury and we have to do pneumo uh, uh, we have to check for pneumothorax and hemothorax and to do decompression needle decompression of the tension pneumothorax and hemothorax for needle decompression i will put here also a picture just look to this picture and i will make another video later on about how to put a needle decompression for tension pneumothorax so again if we have a problem in the breathing i look to the chest i auscultate the chest there is a problem there is diminish air entry or there is uh, not moving chest what to do immediately decompress the chest immediately decompress the chest put a needle put a needle in the second intercostal space midclavicular line second intercostal space as you see in this picture second intercostal space midclavicular line in the right side of the chest or left side of the chest according your examination and and drain the air from that area if the syringe come back with no negative pressure this mean this mean that the patient has tension pneumothorax or if you drain a blood this means the patient has hemothorax again close the chest injury you may need ventilation and you may uh, uh, you have to give oxygen the c is for circulation you have to assess circulation how to assess circulation immediately immediately put your hand on carotid pulsation put your hand on carotid pulsation to feel the pulse of that patient and if you found any external hemorrhage stop that external hemorrhage stop that external hemorrhage by compression and establish two line to large bore cannula and then start giving IV fluid 
later on we will move to disability for that patient we will move to disability for that patient D and here we have to check the AFPO of that patient AFPO mean if the patient was uh, uh, alert verbal uh, just response to voice or just response to pain or unresponsive so for disability it is it is um, there's no time to do Glasgow we just do AFPO whether we have to know whether our patient was alert or unresponsive or response to voice or response to pain only E is for exposure we have to expose the patient completely especially those patients with multiple trauma regarding for uh, regarding F the first F is to put a foley for traumatized patient put a, a foley catheter for traumatized patient but remember there is contraindication for foley in a traumatized patient which is the blood at the meatus which is the urethral injury blood at the meatus is a contraindication for Foley catheter blood at the meatus is a contraindication for Foley catheter the second F is finger exam remember remember you may need to do rectal exam it's controversial until now but in ATLS in in a patient with a trauma to the pelvis you have to do finger examination also the third F which is fast the third F which is fast focus assessment sonography of trauma it is also a bedside ultrasonic uh, ultrasound examination you, you you can do it in a trauma room and see uh, look for any hemoperitoneal uh, uh, any hemoperitoneum and or uh, pericardial effusion lastly give fentanyl as a narcotic as a pain control pain control narcotic it's the best hemodynamically stable narcotic and it also prevent hypothermia but unfortunately fentanyl is not available in all emergency departments so I will repeat this again rapidly the first thing when you receive a trauma patient is to check the airway by, by speak to the patient if he can talk okay no problem if he cannot talk this means obstructed airway what to do chin lift jaw thrust suction oropharyngeal nasopharyngeal airway and an intubation number two is the breathing check the breathing how to check the breathing by auscultating the chest and by looking to the chest rise if there is a problem diminished air entry or, or no chest rise in uh, uh, one side of the chest what to do do needle decompression do needle decompression and then close of the open chest injury and artificial ventilation may be needed and also give oxygen for circulation check the pulses of that patient check the carotid pulse for the volume and for the uh, tachycardia and the bradycardia what to do if you have external hemorrhage stop the external hemorrhage by a pressure by compression by pressure first and establish two large bore IV line cannula and give IV fluid for disability I want you to give me your impression is this patient alert or response to pain or response to voice or he is unresponsive exposure expose all the patient expose all the patient put a foley do finger examination send for fast or do the fast uh, uh, in the trauma room and give sedation give sorry give a uh, pain uh, medication which is the best fentanyl now after you finish the primary survey you have to take a look for the secondary survey secondary survey is only done when the patient a b c's are stable and this secondary survey is head to toe 
examination head to toe examination how to do it start from above start from the head so take examination of the head the scalp and take a look to the eyes abnormality ocular abnormalities and then take a look to the ear and tympanic membrane and periorbital soft tissue injury then come to the neck check the neck for any penetrating wounds any subcutaneous emphysema check the trachea for any deviation and look to the neck vein this is done in a few seconds so then take a look for a neurological examination check the brain function by glasgow comma scale spinal cord motor activity sensation and reflexes then come to the chest the chest auscultate the chest look to the clavicle breathe sound heart sound and you may need ecg especially in those old patients with trauma then come to abdominal injury and uh, sorry abdominal examination in the secondary survey if you have a blunt trauma or penetrating trauma remember penetrating trauma to the abdomen equal surgical explorative laparotomy equal surgical explorative laparotomy i will give you a link here you can find it uh, uh, in the description below and you can find it above in this video for specifically abdominal trauma patients and for blunt trauma put a nasogastric tube and nothing by mouth check rectal examination per rectum examination and insert urine catheter as mentioned before pelvis and limbs check for fracture uh, uh, fractures and peripheral pulses and any wounds bruises and minor injury x-ray you you uh, you need in multiple trauma patients you need the chest x-ray you need the pelvic and long bone x-ray you may need skull x-ray may be useful to search for a fracture when the head injury is present without focal neurological deficit any head injury with focal neurological deficit need CT scan not a skull x-ray and and other orders may be needed for that traumatized patient remember remember when you are putting a cannula when you are putting an IV line for any traumatized patient draw the blood first for a, a blood group and the cross match please note that chest and pelvic x-ray may be needed in a primary survey chest and pelvic x-ray may be needed in the primary survey thank you for being with me in this class please if you like the video just subscribe to my channel and more videos will be available weekly see you soon inshallah if you have any any question you can put it in a comment if you need me to discuss emergency topics just put it in a comment see you next week bye bye everyone